Hey guys, it's Mr. Jack and Triple Zero here, back with Automation the Kurakubi Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Sarich Racing Bus. This old school bus was made in 1961 by the heavy vehicle manufacturing company Sarich Transportation Corporation and was later modified by a bunch of rich speed junkies. With a mindset to push the limits of an average school bus to a daunting race bus that can annihilate anything in its path. While it's got all the seats, lighting, and the automation public schools livery, I wouldn't expect anyone to get in the bus except for the driver. The body that was created to make the race bus is made by a modder named Gizmo Prox in his HMS Crumpets with the Queen mod pack. The link is down at the bottom of the description if you want to download it. It has a lap time of 1 minute 26 seconds 83 milliseconds at the quote unquote Top Gear test track and 2 minutes 25 seconds 45 milliseconds at the automation track, a top speed of 144 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds flat. This vehicle uses a 13.8 liter V12 engine dubbed the Big Ass Block that produces 1,094.2 horsepower and 1,048.6 foot-pounds of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 3.5 miles per gallon and weighs 6,207.7 pounds or 2,815.8 kilograms. And for the market, since those people customize the living crap out of this bus, it doesn't compete with anyone in the market. In terms of how I created the race bus, the panel material will be made out of regular steel with a ladder chassis made out of corrosion resistant steel, with a front longitudinal engine placement and both the front and rear suspensions are solid axle leaf. For the engine, it is a V12 cast iron engine with the bore set to 120mm and a stroke at 102mm which makes it to a 13,840 cubic centimeter engine with a direct acting overhead cam made out of aluminum. The crank is made out of forged steel while the cot rods are heavy duty forged and the pistons are regular forged. And everything you see here is at plus 15 except for the safety. The compression is set at a somewhat of a high 10.5 to 1 ratio with the cam profile set to 61. For the fuel system we are using DCOE carburetors which are I think Weber carburetors using a 6 carburetor configuration with a race intake using super leaded fuel with the fuel mixture set to 13.4, the ignition timing bump to 62, and the RPM limit set to 7000 RPM. Despite crankshaft, conrod, and piston stress, let's just leave it as is. For the headers, we are using race tubular of dual exhaust with the exhaust diameter set to 3.5 inches or 88.9 millimeters, and we're not using mufflers whatsoever. For the drive type, it is a rear-wheel drive manual 4-speed with the top speed set at 146.4 miles per hour with an automatic locker to reduce as much wheel spin as possible. For the tires, we're using semi-slicks with the front set to 295 millimeters and 315 in the back. And also with this mod, the steering does break when you export to Beam and G Drive. I showed you how to fix the steering problem with the AMG Patton Motor Wagon, but instead of just showing you the tutorial again, I'll probably post a separate video probably after the premiere or within the near future. And also, it's running on 26 inch magnesium rims. For the brakes, they're both at 420 millimeters in the front and back. The front and rear brakes are solid piston one disc with a race preset. For the aerodynamics, we're using a semi-clad under tray with the brake airflow set to 30 and having this eedy, kindy, tiny, not so tiny bit rear wing right here. Despite having seats in the bus, we're we'll just instead pretend that there are no seats in the bus and say that it's only got one with a basic interior with no entertainment, with hydraulic power steering, and I put the safety at negative 15 to save as much weight as possible. And the suspension, pretty much standard, standard springs, twin tube dampers, and a passive sway bar using a race preset. Despite having a fair amount of problems on here, such as the wheel spin, brake force, wheel spin, dampers, con rods, and piston stress, we're going to export this to BMG Drive and test it out. So here we are at the automation test track. Are those people in the bus? That's how I create a thumbnail. Just put a bunch of test dummies, use the world editor, and let's see what happens when we unfreeze the physics. They pretty much all die. <laughs> it's just kind of funny how some they just still face plant in the bus. Some? What the reflection is going on here? While some, they're sitting down, some laying back, and the rest, not that bad. It's probably going to take me a while to clean all this mess up. Okay, the dummies are gonzo, so let's start her up. 
really? Didn't these freaking sound things show that 71, like 71 decibels? If we get this, hold on. Realistic gearbox and rev it. Why is it that quiet? We have no mufflers whatsoever. <laughs> this game, man. So instead of just going from one map to another, we're going to stay at the automation track and do some basic performance tests. For the performance test, the first one we're going to be doing is a 0 to 62 acceleration test, second one a 62 to 0 brake test, and the third one a top speed run, if possible, on this map. So first things first, we'll be doing our acceleration test right now. With a slight chance of wheel spin. First gear to second gear, wheel spin, 5.77 seconds. And I got an idea. Uh, where's the differential? I swear I had a differential on here when I was testing it out earlier. What if I do a launch? I don't know if it's going to be possible or not. Same time. How about not getting the wheel spin? Hey, got a better 5.54 seconds. That's nice. All right, 62 to zero right now. 62 to 0 in 4.42 seconds of 181.15 feet. For a 3.5 ton bus, roughly, that's not that bad, to be honest. I mean, in terms of time, nah. But the thing is, it's a heavy vehicle. Like, what would you expect for a heavy vehicle not to stop in a dime? I mean, it's not like a semi-truck hauling, like, whatever, 20 tons of cargo. So getting ready for a top speed run, let's go around this corner with the modified setting. Oh my god. That was a half a clean drift right there. Wow. <laughs> Didn't expect that. So top speed over 100 miles an hour right now. Fourth gear. I would say at the modified steering, I dropped the factor down to 0.475. And the original factor had, what, 0.8? Where if you turn left or right, you're going to break the steering. And top speed? No. I mean, I thought we hit it at first. By around 140-ish. But I think we may have or may have not, so good amount of damage there. Two time it, and the catch fence is clipping through the bus. Okay then, well, real quick, off camera, let's see if I do reach top speed on this straight away. So the answer is 130, so 140 something miles an hour. Not gonna steer. 144, 145, 145 it is. How about another angle? How about right here? Just crash and... It's kind of funny how the freaking axle just pushes... That. <laughs> okay, what did we get? We got stuck in a tree, controller's acting all mental. Oh my god. Hold on, free cam, take a look at this. <laughs> this thing got stuck. I don't know if it got stuck in a tire or on a tree, but this thing got hella bent up. Like, look at the freaking rear end, man. Look at the exhaust. Yo. Yo, what is, did I stretch this out to a 20 inch exhaust or something? What the hell? So let's stay on this track and do a time trial run. We'll do the full race circuit and if possible, we'll do the handling course. And after that, we'll just formally end its misery. Not necessarily misery, but just, just to throw it off somewhere. Like leap of death or something. So here we are up to tire over the line of the start and finish line of the automation racetrack. So we're going to be doing two laps of this course. And hopefully we will cross the line in one piece. So let's get things started here. In three, two, one. Here's the drivetrain. Go. Had a drivetrain but the differential. It didn't have it earlier, which for some reason, why it didn't. I don't know if locking the differential will prove anything useful once we drift. Not that bad for a 1,000 horsepower bus that weighs th three and a half tons. If I had a better attack angle right there, this would have been a little bit more clean. I don't know if I should call this the race bus or the drift bus. I I don't even want to know. I would say after this race, I would just show you like uh, how like the factor settings of the steering factors, like if you left it as is, or how it breaks the bus is steering. Like if you steer left or right, it'll either break the suspension, like if you won't even steer whatsoever, or the steering will become inverted. Like left will be right and right will be left. And hopefully, I don't see a time. It still glitches out for some reason. I still. Gavin figured out why it's been doing that. I cleared the cache and everything, and it still manages to do that where 
you're on a modded map like this, a non-vanilla BMG map, doing like, like a time trial, a race or something, and the timer, see in the top right, the timer is not working, and the camera, like every time you cross the checkpoint, it, the camera just goes in and out like really fast, and... Okay, watch that. Kindly break the bumper off at the most... <laughs> Okay, I mean, we didn't even hit the wall that hard, we still lost the back bumper for some odd reason. Well, we'll just continue without it, we'll just pretend that we didn't even put it there in the first place. And break 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And it didn't even fade whatsoever, that's, uh, uh, that's surprising. Normally for any other vehicle, they'll probably fade, especially how big this vehicle is. If this one had like three or four piston brakes, if it had been set at like a modern day of age, like the 70s, 80s, 90s, and beyond, this would probably be a lot, a lot better in braking. But sometimes if you have too hard of a brakes where well, you slam on the brakes and you just skid all over the place, especially this vehicle, it's got no ABS, like I'm gonna slam on the brakes now. If it, ha it see, no ABS and we're not skidding, just slamming on the brakes. Any other vehicle, like a typical sedan, coupe, or whatever, you'll be skidding, just slamming on the brakes without ABS. So come up to our first, uh, finishing up our first lap here. We're not gonna get time for some odd reason, so just play that sound, Scott. And shot the corner again. If that better brakes, this would have been better. That drift was worthless. It's kind of funny how this bus here, like, it's got no no mufflers whatsoever, and it sounds like it's muffled up, like it's got a bunch of reverse flows, all that good stuff, all those mufflers, and we could barely hear what the bus sounds like. What if I get, like, a... Uh, come to a straightaway and switch cameras. Let's try here. Uh, relative. Yeah, this sounds pretty quiet for some odd reason. So break all the way. Don't even let it off. Okay, good. So you learn from our mistake. And repeat the same mistake. Okay, handbrake did our job, fortunately. And with this offsetting camera, thinking it's a right-hand drive vehicle, even if onboard driver view, let's go back to orbit. It's not that worth it. And it seems like... Pfft, yeah, handbrake does the job for some reason. Brakes doesn't work, so handbrake really fits in. And from that hit, I think we were kind of auto-steering to the right, messing up the alignment of the vehicle, let's see. All right, coming up to our final turn, that hard lag right there. Like, it's not like lagging like, like you see, it's like I call it stop lag, where it lags for like 20 seconds and back to normal. And from that hit, yep, we are auto steering to the right, so we get a time. It says two minutes, 42 seconds, 588 milliseconds for our second lap time. First lap, 145, 393, and our total time is five minutes, 22 seconds, 282 milliseconds. That's all right. What if we go to free roam and crash this thing? So let's get a camera going, eight times. That thing held up. That held up very well at a 40 mile an hour crash. I should crash this into a wall, hold up. 50 something mile an hour hit, right here. Okay. I think the concrete wall has definitely wedged. Yep. the. The bus is now powered by a concrete block. <laughs> How much horsepower do you think I've added there by just doing that? <laughs> so real quick before I go to the handling course of the automation test track, I'm going to spawn the bus without the edited steering factors, and I'll show you like what it would be like if you would just use the, the tire width and rim offset that I have selected for the bus that I was driving earlier, and show you like what it would be like if you would leave the factors as is. Like if you were to steer the bus left and right, so... I'm steering the bus right, right now. See how far the wheels turn from that? And if I go to the other bus and steer right like this. Like, right, look at the steering angle compared to this bus right here and the other bus. Like, the other bus isn't realistic whatsoever. Like, I can steer left and right just fine of the edited bus, while the non-edited bus, like, you see here, that right tire is bent up just because of that. Now, if I steer left, your steering is officially broken. You cannot steer left and right as effective as you used to because you, unfortunately, broke a wheel. 
and I broke the other, so now I can't steer. So I'll post that tutorial video sometime soon, either after the premiere or within the near future. So now we're going to be taking you to the handling course of the same map and see what it's like handling these tight corners of this track. So here we are at the handling course and we're just behind the line and we got two crest signs right here. Hopefully that doesn't really mean much. So let's get things started here in three, two, one, start. That launch was kind of worthless, so lock the differential. I don't know if that's going to help or not. And there goes the back bumper by just doing that. <laughs> nice. And I've never done the handling course on this map. It, it was just automation track all the way. I mean, that's the only place I've been to where my last video, I think it was the super duper truck or some, something like that, where I have went on the hill climb section, including... The, uh, I think it was the next update, not the next update, but the 0 0.19 update of where I've taken it to the, uh, the, the hill climb sections of this map here. And I crossed that checkpoint earlier and it still did an in and out camera glitch and we still don't have a time set on this track for some odd reason. I don't know if it's a mod conflict, bug, or what. I mean, the vanilla tracks work, but not this map. Like, modded maps or this automation BMG collab map here. I just don't know what it is. Probably have to wait till like 0 0.2 something, whatever, if it gets fixed in the near future. And we see green on the other side of the road here, just like literally 20 feet over to the guardrail. So they come all the way around to complete our first lap. So that was called first lap. We can't get a time, so that's a big oof. Hello, bumper. Goodbye, bumper. Ah. Uh, just a nudge, that's fine. Literally, these crest signs are all over, like that one. That little crest here, like they're all over the place here, like crest. Two turns later, crest. Three turns later, crest. I mean, like, yeah, I know that, man. I know there's gonna be a crest, like, whatever, five feet in front of me. That was close. And now we see some blue over there, so we're about to complete our second lap and finish the race off, so... Wow, not that bad, so I'll give you time once we finish. After getting away from this guardrail, trying to drift the best as I can, just a showboat. So, lap time... Damn, we get a 1 minute 46 seconds, 761 milliseconds, this is our second lap. First lap, 1 minute 9 seconds, 743 milliseconds, with a total time of 3 minutes 30 seconds, 752 milliseconds. And what's the aftermath of hitting the freaking fence or something, the guardrail? Well, we broke that. These things come apart real easy. 30% strength. Are you kidding me? Was this made in China or something? I swear, these things are just glued on to this bus. This is stupid. And some of these look like duplicate parts of one another that I don't even really recognize when I was making the bus. Like this. What is this right here? Is that part of, like, the black plastic piece they put around just to give it that, uh, bus look? Not just, like, a boring flat white. Just put some stripes right here and automation public, like your school livery. Including the top right here where you put the manufacturer's logo or something on here. And to wrap this video off, we'll be taking this down to Brutal Slope and see how brutal this thing can get. I swear, what's it like hitting the wall up here at a good amount of speed? Going over 100 miles an hour. Watch the trees. 100 and... Let's say 118 once we get the wall. Yep, 118. So let's get a camera right now. Let's see how this bus withstands the wall like we've been withstanding some of the walls earlier at the automation track. So here it comes. Hit right now. Takes the wall pretty good. It just damaged the hell out of the engine compartment. So... Eight times... Girl, it was all of the body molding just to make up the bus. And I think the engine is toast, right? No, it's it's still alive. And we got a wheel spinning like crazy. Well, not crazy as it was like a half a second ago. And there goes one wheel. So we're still in business. Let's reverse. Let's not reverse. Forward. Hold up. Interesting, I was in reverse, and it was like, kind of like, both wheels are on the ground. When I shifted the first gear, I don't know, it just leaned forward. So front end, hell destroyed, engine is exposed. How would we check the interior, like if we were like a, a student riding the bus? So, assuming if there were seatbelts, back seat's okay, this row, this row is alright, maybe a crushed leg if possible. Save the left section of the row, middle seat's here, uh, 
They'll probably definitely get some whiplash, front seats, mmm, maybe minor injuries. But overall, I think this bus probably saved everybody, except for the driver. Because there's no driver's seat whatsoever. So it's skateboarded ourselves down in an awkward fashion, maxed out on the throttle. 5.17 seconds, so not a whole lot of difference by just going downhill at a high speed, and I swear if we... 147. We're stuck at 147. What if I turn the engine off once I reach to the bottom, like right now? Okay, engine totally off. We're in neutral. Let's see if we can go faster than 147, like the uh, top speed was just limiting us from going faster, because I know like a BMG vehicle, an average BMG vehicle, if you go down this ramp, it'll go way over the RPM limit and the engine would definitely explode, so... Alright, now we're going faster. 160 and climbing. Like right now, if the engine had been on, we've been stuck at 147, no matter what. And we may need to turn the engine on, but it'll be probably a little bit risky because we'll blow the engine up, which I know we would. Or not, let's do about 100 miles an hour in the exit. So get a camera going right about now. Okay, get a camera going. Here come Mr. Bush. Lights still work. Well, let's turn the lights on and off just to give it its last wish to, uh... Okay, drivetrain totally snapped. <sighs> Eight times, body pan is flying all over. I mean, front end squished up like like hitting the wall at high speed earlier. So regular cam to full speed. And I think we may... We've killed the engine finally. I swear... Really, that impact earlier killed the didn't kill the engine. Hitting that wall at a high speed, it did kill the engine, but now it did. So pretty much same amount of damage. Severe front end damage, just squished in, some bendiness. People on the inside would have been alright. Alright, skateboard down the ramp now. Now let's see if we get a different top speed or 0 to 60 test going. 3.53 seconds. Oh wow. Let's turn the engine off. So we can not limit ourselves down to 147 and go further to reach, or go faster to reach this little wedge thingy down here, as I call it. I mean, it's just a flat wall, but we're just going to get ourselves wedged down at a high speed going 175 or 177 once we reach it. Yep. Okay, get a camera going now. I haven't tried out this angle. Normally, I'd go like over there and do it the other side, but what's it like doing it from right here? So 16 to 100. And hit. Oh boy, this thing is really getting wedged. Front's bending, m front middle section's bent up. The 16, body panel's gone crazy. Something in the back is flying to the front section of the bus. That's, uh, that's the wing. Oh wow. The wing just clipped through the back of the bus and went to the front and it's out of the bus. That's interesting, so let's spawn this to the bottom of the hill to show the aftermath of the destruction, and let's see what's it like. So we have made a short bust. <laughs> nice. Okay, the roof has collapsed on the front section of the bus. Like, this will be the front, and the roof would be... Hold up. Hold up, I just don't get it. Okay, yeah, I don't get it. So, clip through the ground. What the hell is this? Yo, tell me what the hell is this right now. Just... Explain to me, is this extraterrestrial stuff or what? I just don't want to know. So respawn it in an awkward fashion, and that will end our video off. So that'll do it with automation and BMG drive with the race bus. Well, it's pretty fast in terms of top speed and acceleration. I don't know if I should call this a race bus or a drift bus because of the significant amount of wheel spinning gears 1 and 2. If it had the proper suspension tuning, it would have been a great drift bus rather than a race bus. And if it were to be built in the modern times, like whatever, the 2010s or 2020s, it would probably have a higher top speed because it would lower the weight by a significant amount for the engine and the bus, which would have made it better. But since it's from the 60s, we gotta deal with it. So this has been Mr. Jacket Triple Zero. I'll see you in the next video.